And this storyline has three key elements. Um, the individual gets involved with another person or group. And this person or group um, reinforces them for crime, models crime, excuse me, prevents them, presents them with beliefs favorable to crime, provides them with opportunities for crime, whatever. Um, so for example, an individual may become romantically involved with a criminal for a brief period. An individual may spend more time with their criminal friends. Research in particular suggests that most adolescents, for example, have both criminal and non-criminal friends. And sometimes they hang out mostly with their non-criminal friends, sometimes mostly with their criminal friends. Research also indicates that gang members, you know, they drift in and out of the gang. Uh, they may go for a period of days or weeks where, you know, don't spend much time with the gang and then a period of time where they're quite close with the gang. And so an individual then has this temporary association with criminal others, and these criminal others, in a variety of ways, increase the likelihood they'll engage in crime. A couple of quick examples. A girl of 16 met a young man who had the necessary ingredients for passing bad checks. He ran across some paper and some ID, and I started busting checks. We did it all over the states of Wisconsin, Michigan, Illinois, and Minnesota. Another example, one individual who had not committed any previous armed robberies explains his decision to rob by stating that he was trying to help a friend because he asked me to help him out. He had done a favor for me before. I really didn't want the money. It was an emotional thing more than anything else. Like the guy did, a hell of me, uh, did me a hell of a favor. Another example, the periods, I'm quoting, the periods of activity that seemed to make street life most attractive to female street hustlers were the periods uh, when they were actively involved with a man and perhaps several wives-in-law, and when the majority of the other hustlers with whom they interacted were pulling off scams without being apprehended. And so then, a third storyline conducive to the crime, you temporarily get involved with a criminal other, and for a variety of reasons, they, for a brief period of time, increase the likelihood that you will engage in crime. Fourth storyline conducive to crime, a brief but tempting opportunity for crime. And here, storyline has two key elements. Something happens, and what happens increases or causes you to perceive the cost of crime as low and the benefits as high over a period of time. So um, give a couple of examples. Again, quoting from some of the qualitative literature. Barney Haskell worked for a few weeks on a truck that delivered meat products each evening. He went around the neighborhood asking people if he knew, he knew if they wanted to buy canned hams. And so we have this individual, temporarily gets this job, provides some nice opportunities for theft, takes advantage of it, makes some extra money. Another example. To the limited extent that they participated in drug selling, women were almost always used as temporary workers when men were arrested or refused to work or when it was hot because of, of the police presence. So again, this opportunity comes along where the females, because the men are sort of lying low, whatever, they've been arrested, where they can go out, sell some drugs for a week or two, make some extra money, they take advantage of this opportunity. It's a fleeting opportunity, but they take advantage of it. Another example. Persistent thieves often work in units that are more accurately described as cycles rather than individual acts. For a short indefinite period, until investigative or security systems shut down the opportunity, one attempts to convert a batch of counterfeit money or forged, traveler check, or forged traveler's checks, make purchases on one or more stolen credit cards, or use stolen or false identification papers to pass bad personal checks. Well, final example, having successfully stolen a car, it is prudent to commit a series of stick-ups in a short period before the car is likely to be placed on police lists rather than only commit one stick-up for each car theft. Final storyline conducive to crime, temporary break with conventional others or institutions. And this storyline has two key elements. First, the individual initiates or is subject to a temporary break with conventional others or institutions. Temporary break, for example, with parents, school authorities, etc. And this break causes the individual to believe that the costs of crime are low. Um, a few examples. Sometimes conventionally others may temporarily leave the individual or force the individual to leave. So for example, your parents go on a short trip leaving you home alone. An individual temporarily breaks up with a romantic partner. A worker experiences a temporary layoff. And so you have this temporary break conventionally others, conventional institutions, and the costs of crime are lower for you. Or an individual may temporarily leave conventionally others or institutions. So for example, juveniles may skip school, they may run away from home, college students go on an unsupervised trip, spring break, um, an adult leaves a romantic partner, an adult quits working for a period of time, and so 
Your ties with conventional others, with conventional institutions are reduced for a brief period. Your costs of crime are lower. You engage in some crime. You go down to wherever you take your spring break. Parents aren't around. Teachers aren't around. You let loose. Um, quick example. Shambles is a study of two delinquent groups, the Saints and the Roughnecks. Describes how the Saints were able to temporarily escape direct control usually by using their automobiles to remove themselves from the, quote, site of the community. So, to quote Chambliss, on weekends, the automobile was even more crucial than during the week. For on weekends, the saints went to Big Town, a large city. Big Town activities included drinking heavily in taverns or nightclubs, driving drunkenly through the streets, and committing acts of vandalism and playing pranks. Um, so, basically then, there are these five major storylines that I argue are conducive to crime. Each storyline begins with some event, and this event has consequences that, for a range of reasons, increase the likelihood, temporarily increase the likelihood, that individuals will engage in crime for a period of time. And then something happens to end the story. Uh, that something may be a crime, or that something may be some sort of non-criminal event or circumstance. And so once more, my central point that criminologists for the most part, qualitative criminologists in particular, focus primarily on these background factors, on the individual's average or typical standing on a range of factors, and they focus to some extent on situational variables, but they largely neglect storylines. They neglect the stories that criminals tell. And by doing so, I think they're overlooking a major source of crime. And in my paper, I won't go into detail, time is running out, but I talk about how quantitative criminologists in their surveys can examine storylines. That based on the five major storylines that I could describe, they could develop brief descriptions of these storylines. They could ask individuals in a large-scale survey, well, how often in the past several months have you experienced a desperate need for money? How often in the last several months have you had the following types of disputes with another, et cetera, et cetera? And what I predict they will find is that some individuals will say, yeah, I've experienced a lot of these storylines. Some individuals will say, well, you know, no, that really hasn't happened to me all that often. And that those individuals who experience a lot of these storylines, I predict, are the individuals who will be more likely to engage in crime. And further, I predict that they'll be most likely to engage in crime during those periods when they're experiencing these storylines. 